Hello and welcome back to the Robbish Chat YouTube channel. As you can see, today I'm joined by two people, including a new face. So, firstly, Jared, back again. Feels like yeah. we're never away. How are you doing? Great. I am not the new face. I'm the oldest face on the roster, I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, uh, I think you might be beaten by uh, a certain someone, but I won't mention it. And then, Sam, how are we doing? Nice to have you on. Yeah, I'm good. Excited. Excited to get going and start, start doing a few more of these. Yeah, it's good. I think we've got a good video today. So today we're going to be covering, as you'll see by the title, Rovers squad debt foremost. We know who's leaving now in terms of the out of contract players. We know that we've not got anyone in yet. We might get a few in, you know. It won't be by the time this video goes out, but rumours circulate that quick. Anything could be happening at the moment behind the scenes. So we'll run through what we've lost from last season, what we currently have, and then you know, where we need to go forward. I've also asked on Twitter for people's suggestions the other day, and I think the resounding comments of filling out is everywhere but goalkeeper, <laughs> which I'd agree, but maybe we're not going to get in in time and probably can't afford to do it. So we'll, we'll run through basically what we should probably target and what we can maybe use the academy to cover in terms of backup because some positions are just backup. So we'll start with this graphic. So this graphic takes a look at all the players lost from last season. So, any in white are the first team, yellow under 23s, and blues under 18s. And if it's in italics, then it means that player was on loan last year. So, we'll start with you, Sam. So, you know, you look at this graphic, it's worrying, isn't it? You know, what do you make of who we've actually lost since last season? Oh, I think there's a, obviously, there's a few players in there that obviously we're going to miss, like sort of the Rockwells. The Lenehans, the, the Nyambes. Um, I think they're obviously big, big players that big shoes to fill. Um, as even for any young, young, young lads coming through, I think it's going to be pretty tough. Uh, even like the likes of like Johnson, I thought Davenport was an interesting departure. I thought he obviously uh, expressed his frustration online, but I think he, he is probably someone we might kick ourselves uh, to miss. Um, yeah. But I, I always thought like Luke, look like Luke Brennan. I thought that was a weird one because he, he had a couple of loans. I think he went to filed and stuff. And yeah. I thought he, he, I felt, I always felt like he was someone who could have come into the first team as well. But you know, it's, it's the way it goes sometimes. And I think, like I say, we've lost some big, big players in there, and there's big shoes to fill. Especially the main ones, Lenehan. I think you can't. Yeah. There's not. Is is there a centre half in the championship that fills his shoes? I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's a real tough one with Lenian. I think like you look at that centre back position, and with Van Eck's name under Lenian's, it's and that's a dream centre back partnership, isn't it? If you could get into that partnership next year in the Championship, for me, it's at least the top six partnership at the back. So obviously, we've got these two missing. You know, with full eleven, and I've put together an eleven that you can make off the players that have gone and. I think you look at that and if you added a striker and a goalkeeper into that, I think you're laughing. I mean, I've even, I missed off, obviously, Kadra played the odd game up front. You could move him up front and put a Chapman in on the wing if you wanted to. But I've kind of tried doing it as the plays we've seen and some of the young plays to fill them gaps. So, Jared, if you look at that team, I mean, that team would cope in the championship, surely. If, yeah, they would cope. That's that's what worries me. It's because you know why they would cope in the championship and probably survive would be because of Jan Paul and Dara. That back center pairing, that those were to your point, Sam, like those were two of the best center halves in the championship last year. I don't think that's really biased to say that. And that's like what is the crate that that it really is the deepest worry for me you know outside of being basically in love with yondale thomason that's a lot of minutes you know and i, I started to try to look at things in like minutes played because like it's a lot of minutes over the course of year you got to get somebody in there and that's a lot of minutes we have to replace right so big shoes indeed those shoes are like the size of buses those double deckers y'all are so fond of over there those are what you're sticking your feet into if you go into that rover's back line that says, and it? it's the back line, I think it's the major part for us. And I think that we're kind of the gist of the comments that we got. A lot were saying, you know, I know everyone, well, a lot of people said all positions, but everyone listed centre backs. I don't think there's an answer that he's missing a centre back on it, which obviously sums everything up in terms of our position. So, 
if we go from what we've lost to what we currently have, so put together a graphic that will show basically the first team and the under-23s. Obviously, as it says there, all the players are in the positions they played the most last year, according to Transfer Market. So, you know, if we look, we've got two keepers, four centre-halves, right back, two right-backs, two left-backs, a CDM, no centre-mids, I think, which is a big uh, thing. Two players across the left, centre and right, attacking mid bit, and three up front. Obviously, Buckley... He's probably more in the centre mid section, but purely for going off transfer market, I've put him in Cam because that's where he was listed. Mark and Dick can go up front. Gallagher, as much as people don't like it, can play on the wing. Brereton Diaz can probably play on the wing. You know, that front four, well, maybe the two wide positions and the striker can almost switch around. So that is something, you know, to take into account on it. Yeah. And then if you look at, you know, the in terms of the current expected XI, this is kind of like a 4 2 three, one, you know, situation. So what do you make of that team, Sam? Do you think it would, you know, do well next year? Again, centre-offs, it, it's such a big thing in the Championship to have a solid two at centre-off. You don't see a team do well in the Championship without a good well, back four, especially centre-offs. And as you mentioned, Jared, minutes played, you got what Ayala barely played last year. I know he's played; he's got the experience, but he's yeah. linked to the move away. Yeah. Um, and you, you look at minutes played, and you got Wharton, Pickering. He was injured, but he, he he obviously played quite a few minutes. Brown barely played. Yeah. So it is defensively, you do worry. Uh, like you say, attack. In the, I think the attacking side of the team is not too much of a worry. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Mark Hande in a, like next year, especially because obviously he got injured quite early on. I think it's yeah. his first game actually. Um, but defensively, I think it's still a worry. I think obviously Carter can come in, mm-hmm. and again, I'm excited to see Carter play. Mm-hmm. I think he did really well at Portsmouth last year, um, and obviously they wanted him back. But I, I think we can't risk lo- losing him. He's obviously a youth product, and I think he he he's someone who needs to step up and yeah. probably will relish his chance to step up, actually. But, like you say, minutes played is a huge thing for that centre-half spot. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we've got it at the moment. You can't rely on Ayala. I wish you could. Do you know what I mean? But I think Ayala, if if they're having open conversations with him, at this stage in your career, you might not be a championship starter. You know, you might be the perfect third centre-half, but we cannot rely on him to start the season much as I like him. Same with JRC. He only played 14 games, and how many minutes has JRC played in the last three seasons? And I don't want to derail the show, but we've had crazy bad injuries with luck, I think. I don't think that's being biased, and I don't know what that comes from. I don't even want to explore it, but because of the injury histories of some of these players, it's a huge worry in terms of I just can't go into the season pretending that they're going to play 30 games, you know, 30 matches. Yeah, this is it. It's game time is it? I think we've got an all right you know we'll look at the centre backs I think we've got an all right pool of centre backs but like you say how many of them are going to play as many games as they need to yeah and that's probably the worry that's Ayala's worry isn't it if you knew you had Ayala for 46 games I think a main two centre backs are covered all season aren't they with Ayala and Morton I think yeah. that's a strong partnership yep yeah do you think that Carter is physically Ready for the championship? I mean, y'all, y'all get to see him in person. I don't. Does he look like he can take the physicality of that position at that level? I think he can. I think, uh, you know, Walter, I think Wharton isn't that much of a big lad either. He's tall, but so is Carter. But neither of them are, you know, a bit like Lenny on is a bit bulkier than more yeah. kind of slimmer players. I think, they, you know, I think he will go up. And, you know, he's had that season in League One that's full of nasty strikers to go up against. Yeah. So it's one of that. It's, you can only really tell when he comes into the championship team and has a lot of games. And I think that's the that's the measure. We've got to kind of let them have their games, but also we can't let them have too many if they're not good enough. So what we've done, we split up position-wise. So we'll just run through each position and see, you know, should we improve what kind of player we're looking for? Maybe not a definite player name. So mm-hmm. if we start with the keepers, so I think the keeping department's looking the strongest. It's looked at the club for a while. Obviously, we lost Sturgiakis in terms of an under-23s keeper, but, you know, Kaminsky and Pearce first team, and then Easton, who's 
a certain for the third choice keeper spot almost. Uh, Joe Hilton, Aidan Dowling, and Felix Goddard, who's just signed a contract. Yeah. You know, there's others, there's Will Please as well. There's a, another young lad, I can't remember his name, but I think we're pretty stuck. You know, do we need a goalkeeper this summer or is money spent better elsewhere, Jared? <laughs> Everywhere but goalkeeper, I think is what somebody said. I put out a thing on Twitter too, but I think, yeah, goalkeeper's fine. I haven't even thought about it, especially did you guys see the clip? of Rover's Twitter with Kaminsky doing that drill and making yeah. three. Just so buttery smooth, you know? And I like that type of stuff. I think as a fan of football, it's great to watch three keepers do the same drill because then yeah. you're seeing the subtle, just that, because it's like it's like 1% more, you know? Like the difference between some of these keepers and stuff, it's that 1%, 2% difference. And, you know, you see them back there and you saw Kaminsky, Kaminsky do the drill and I'm just like I'm not worried about him you know at all nor keeper it's the it's this positions in front of keeper um and not having again that consistency because I think of strong back line permeates mentally throughout the rest of the yeah. team on the field you know who's behind you you feel good about what you're doing ahead of you and if you're the keeper and you know who's in front of you you feel good about what's happening so that interconnectedness may be a worry but Goalkeeper's gravy, as far as I'm concerned. I think you look at all the teams that go up as well. Obviously, Norwich had the back line of having Aarons and Lewis and Hanley and, yeah. you know, Zimmerman were in and closer. You can name all them. Fulham this year, you know, kind of the same. Maybe Bowen are switching about a bit, but they had that many quality centre-backs that you kind of knew they were going to go up on it. Yeah, All these teams that do well have solid back lines, regular back lines. It's a thing that we've been mourned at Rovers for years. You know, we got to one stage a couple of years ago where we'd used, I think, 15 different back four oh. lines. And that way, you know, every position as well, swapping. Bradley Johnson played at centre back some of the games. We were that chop and change with centre back. So, yeah. Sam, are you in agreement with keepers? You know, just a quick one on it, really. Do we need oh, to do absolutely. anything? Absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely spot on. I, like Kaminsky, I've said it for the last, well, especially last season he's one of the best keepers in the league and there's you can't i don't think you can argue with that uh, i like back on that video uh, i was impressed with Easton in the in the video as well when he was diving out of the ball and stuff that bravery yeah. and he's a young lad again yeah. and i think that's the thing with uh thomason is that he's good with his young young lads and we've got a great academy um and we've seen that in recent years with players coming through um and i think he can really utilize that academy especially with like we've already had travis and what's in nine and then Hunter left but you've had buckley and play, players like that who have become mm -hmm. crucial players for this side and i think yeah i think goalkeeper is spot on i don't think you can get a better duo really in the league i might be a bit no. big-headed there but it is but that's okay but it's okay you're allowed <laughs> <laughs> See, there's always rumours about Pears leaving, isn't there? And I'd be tempted to let him leave and just put Eastham on the bench. Because I don't think, obviously, unless Kaminsky such what he doesn't, but if he had a big injury, then maybe we'd be a bit more concerned. But for me, it's just, if someone come in and offered a bit of money for Pears mm -hmm. and they'd take his wages off, I'd just say, mm -hmm. go on, yeah. you can go. So yeah, it's just, I don't know if anyone will. But we'll see. People need keepers. Teams need keepers. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll come calling for pairs. So if we move on to the right backs, so obviously Nyambe, his departure was confirmed earlier this week. So two right backs. James Brown made his debut on the last day. Looked solid, but you've got to take into account what the last game actually meant and what it meant to Birmingham as well. Yeah. And then Joe Rankin Costello, we know about him. A real talent. I think he's still a talent, but forever seems to be injured and never seems to find his right position. Obviously, under 23s, Dan Pike's there and Jay Haddow under 18s. We've just released uh, Joseph Ferguson, as we showed on the original graphic. So that's kind of, you know, a right back option gone. But you were never going to be. It'd have been fifth choice in this list. So right. with Mayan Bay gone, Zifout gone. And obviously, Ferguson got in the rankings. Should Rovers look into the right-back market? Sam, what do you think on this one? Well, 
I'll be honest, I didn't see James Brown play. Uh, I, I didn't quite catch the Birmingham game. Uh, Rankin Costeo is someone since his big injury last season. I felt like he was a bit shaky. Uh, that, again, I don't know if that's because, like you mentioned, he's not really found his position yet. Um, he, I think he's mentioned before he wants to play further forward, but I think it is a position that we do look pretty weak on. Like you say, James Brown looks solid, but it didn't really mean anything. It was pretty bit, it was a bit of a sort of cruise game, really, wasn't it? Let's yeah, face it. Just to get any better play out, isn't it? It was, it was, it really was. So, and because of the warm weather, it was basically just everyone having a good time a little bit. Last game of the season, no one was playing for anything. So, yeah, it's probably not a game that you can judge. But from what we've seen, it looks like James Brown is training. And he, he I've seen him have a few conversations with the new, the new gaffer. So, yeah, I don't know if he's seen him play on the, the last game. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a position that we do look weak on, but again, I wouldn't. You say you like Ranka Costello. He's, he's looked good at times, but I think since his injury, yeah. he did look shaky in a couple of games. Um, so I think it's a position that we could have a look at, but I don't think it's the most crucial position. I do think right back. I think James Brown, he's also a young lad. Well, they're all young, all four of them are young. So mm-hmm. experience, more yeah. game time. And we'll see how it goes over the season. But maybe if it's something that might need addressing in January, maybe that's probably something that we can just push forward a little bit to later on. But Yeah, well, what we'll do, we will cover a certain player who can play right back that Jared's a big fan of later on. I can already see the, uh, the smile. We'll cover him in the winger section, so we'll kind of hop back to that. But that's it with the right back. Like you say with JRC, I think, Getting a consistent run has been his biggest issue, and I think that's affected him a lot. Yeah, I also think he's always been compared to Nyambe playing, and sometimes that's a bit. I think he's a better attacker than Nyambe, but I think defensively, one on one duels, Nyambe wins hands down. So, you know, maybe if we're switching the way we're playing him, the right back has a little bit of a different role. Maybe JRC then comes into it and finally gets his run. You know, he's been one of them who's, it feels like he's been around the first team for six years. He made his yeah, debut in his League One season. Yeah. In one of the, uh, the cat, not the Carabao Cup, what was it called? Checker Trade Trophy. Checker made his appearance yeah. in that. Looked good coming on. Kept going through 20 feet. Then he, I think he broke his leg and spent nine months out. Mm-hmm. And then he come back and kind of looked like he was going to get in the first team again. And then an injury happened. Then he looked like he was getting in again. And obviously, you know, at that stage, he's a, a bit where other players are pushing themselves forward. Yeah. It's a tough one. You know, Jerry, do we need a right back? Or is yeah. it, like Sam says, is it, we do need one, but maybe you push for other positions first? That's not a bad idea, actually. The January thing you said, Sam, was like, I was like, oh, okay. Because if you're Yon Dale, you might want to see. Because it's like, it's the classic over kind of evaluation of like, okay, this guy hasn't stayed healthy, but if he does stay healthy, what if I have a gem, right? So maybe he looks at JRC like that. Maybe he looks at Jane Brown as like a fit guy who's going to run hard for you and soak up some minutes. And I would be interested to hear you, either of you or somebody who knows a lot. I really like Daniel Pike. I'm hoping, I don't know if this is the year for him, but I would love to have him have a breakout year outside of that if you bring in my guy let's just not he's like reverse Voldemort let's not say his name so that he actually comes on the roster we'll save his name for the very end of the show um but if we do get him then you have three players that you can see what happens with until January right and maybe that is a good recipe but honestly can JRC slide into the midfield a little and give you something there perhaps? Because I just don't know if he has the juice in those legs anymore. It's like unfortunate because he's like 22, 23, but those injuries, it does look like it's sapped some of his explosiveness and his ability to separate and his ability to accelerate when he's out in space on the wing one-on-one or something. So I would like to see JRC slide in and then see what else we find out there. But the January idea is really solid. Like I would, if that, if that happens, 
I wouldn't be like terribly bothered by it. You know, if that was the, the, the path we went down was the wait and see what we have for the first few months path. It's not bad, especially with the World Cup break. January is going to be here before we know yeah. it. November to December, we have 30 days of no football. And then what do we come back for two weeks and then transfers, right? So it's interesting that part of it and how that might factor into the transfer window is going to be crazy this year, the January one post World Cup. It's going to be bonkers. Yeah, it's what we like though, isn't it? I think it could be, we never do business in January. It always seems to be, I think only the League One season when we've really, you know, gone and set out and improved the squad like we did with Armstrong coming in and, you know, Amari Bell and Jack Payne that year. But in terms of Dan Pike, I think from watching at 23, I always thought he were ready to kind of break through before he went on his own to foul. And I don't mind these loans, but I think sometimes the they can almost halt a player's progression. Like if they go and they're not playing week in, week out, it's pointless. Yeah. They might as well just come to us and play 23's football and get on the bench. Sometimes, you know, getting that balance with young players is hard and I'll cover that in the centre-backs when we mention a certain someone, but Pike's one of them that he's probably at the age now where this is could be his last year to break through. Yeah, We like getting rid of them at 20 and 21. We like saying go and play League Two football, go and build a career in League Two and work your way up. You know, we've done it with, there's a young lad, James Connolly, we released who struggled with injury and now he's, we're a star player for Bristol Rovers last year. He's just got to move back. And the aim always, you know, we were speaking to some of the academy staff and the aim is to get them in the first team, but if you can't get them in the first team, get them playing football, let them make a living off football. Mm -hmm. So that could be what we do with Pike. We could say, you know, you've done well, but we've got Jay Haddock coming through at eight teams. We've got another young lad coming through below who can step up into your position. And the first team path isn't there. So we could see the end of his time here, or it could be a breakout year. Yeah. Players come from nowhere to come in. John Buckley kind of come from nowhere to come into mm -hmm. the first team. And Travis almost weren't playing at one point for the 23s and then got his first team chance, made the most of it. So we'll see how it goes in the right back department. I think I agree with both of you. Position we could look at getting someone in, but not a definite and not a priority almost. Yeah. Centre backs. So we look at, you know, we got Ayala Ward and Carter McGlore in terms of options at the back. And then I think the young lads, we've got a really good stock of them now. Ash Phillips, he's one everyone talks about. Uh, Jello Sardage signed a contract. Sam Barnes, highly rated. Mulberry, we're a big fan of Sam Barnes. Really big fan. <laughs> you know, I just spent... Sorry? I said, oh, I'm sorry. I, co I coughed, then said I didn't know that. I did two interruptions for the price of one. Yeah. Uh, Louis Annesley uh, spent last year at walking in the National, I think you were in the National League South. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Gamble just signed a contract. George Pratt signed a contract. I think for Rovers, we're kind of solid in the youth bit. Even Wharton and Carter are, you know, that old. It's only Ayala that's actually a really, really experienced centre-back in this team. Mm -hmm. Just with Ash Phillips, when we mentioned the loan, I think one of Rovers' biggest challenges this year will be, what do you do with Ash Phillips? Because he's probably not going to start so often. But if you keep him on the squad and keep him on the bench every week, it's going to halt his development because he won't play for the 23s because he's got to go to the match day squad with us playing Tuesday, Saturday, you know, be travelling down on a Monday, coming back up on, wet on the Tuesday night. So that's three days when he can't play for the under 23s. It's kind of the Carter situation. I think we found with Aidan Carter that he ran the bench last year, weren't getting game time, and that's why he went out on loan. So centre-back options, we're probably going to let, uh, we'll probably let Phillips have a loan stay in the 23s. One of the other three centre-backs will go. So, and McGlore's future's nowhere near sure. He could easily leave the club this summer. Do Rovers need a centre-back, Sam? And maybe, do they need more than one? Yeah, absolutely. I think centre-half, as, as we've mentioned earlier on, is the Twitter, it was centre-half, it was centre-half. It, it was. I think it's vital, as I've mentioned, it's you need that duo. Maglar. He, he's had his chance. He's not been great, let's face it. 
uh, kind of only really known for being fast on FIFA, if we're fate, if we're if we're being honest. <laughs> um, so I think he went to Northampton, if, if that's right, and didn't really do great there. Uh, came back, not really been given. He's been given a couple of chances, not really taken them. So I think he's someone that, like you say, will leave this summer. Um, Annesley again, someone who actually plays for Gibraltar, gets that international experience, plays against, obviously, can play with some great players in international, plays some, against some really solid strikers. Mm-hmm. But again, he's not really been given, I, I don't actually think he's been given an opportunity in the first team. But maybe there's a reason for that. Uh, Ash Phillips obviously is someone that's mentioned all the time. Mm-hmm. Obviously, got a really bright future. Yeah, um, could obviously be a top top Premier League player. Plays the England sort of youth setup. But what do we do with him? Um, he needs to play games. He does need to play games. Does he need to play games for the first team? Is, 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 he's only just he turned seventeen today, I think, or something like that. So, yeah. so he's does amazing. he need to play? He's he's, he's a young lad. Um, so, again, it's it's the question of what you do with them. Does he does he play for the? Tw- he need he needs game time. That's hundred percent. There's no there's no yeah. question. And um, but I did see that. I think we've got a lot long term contract that he signed when he well when. Yeah. And activate when he's seventeen or something like that. So there's no massive rush, but will he get you know people in his ear going, "Oh well, obviously there's rumours of Spurs and people like that." But how true them rumours are, we never know. Um, obviously, Ayala, like I mentioned, is looking like he might be leaving. Hmm. Um, yeah. he's, he's an experienced body. We've not really got. We had Johnson last year. But I don't think we've really got an experienced body in the club at the moment, bar Ayala. Obviously, Dak is he's, he's an experienced body without the age. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's sort of that, that character and he's someone that you can rely on, I can imagine, in the dressing room. But I think Ayala, if we don't replace him with an, another sort of experienced big centre-half, is he worth keeping? I can imagine he's probably taking quite a bit away every week as well in terms of money. So... Highest on the bill, is he not? I think he could be. I think so, yeah, Maybe I think he the is. highest wage earner on the roster. There was a Twitter question about that too. Somebody asked regarding roster depth, what's our budget? And I love that question because I feel like we'll never know the answer. No, no, but, no, no. But, but, but we, yeah, we can look at our top three earners and assume that that's about the most money we could give out because I think at least we can extrapolate that. We haven't been able to pay certain players like Lenahan. If we could match what Burrow paid him, then he would have stayed, right? One would have to think. Mm. But I think that was a big, and it's his last big paycheck. So that's why I didn't fault him. You know, it's his probably his last big payday in terms of getting really big, good wages locked in for a couple of years. So I couldn't blame him for that. But uh, I, I, Ayala and his wages, something has to be done. <laughs> It's too big of a chunk for us. That's it. It's he don't play the role. If he were playing every week, he'd fit it. We're a bit like Jacob Davenport when we discussed Davenport. I think if Davenport ran on half of what he's on now, I think we might have said, you know, stay around and be a squad player. But when he's on that much money, it's it don't make sense to just not have him playing. That could, I think that's the I all the situation summed up well. In terms of you know, centre backs we've obviously been linked with double A's with uh, titled him because I can never ever pronounce his name. Yeah, I know so, Ahmed Hodzic. I've I looked it up. Ahmed Hodzic. I'll leave you to pronounce it. We did do a video on double uh, A, obviously yeah. last week. Me and Jared. You know, yeah. Jared did a bit of a tactical analysis of how he plays and where they'll be and. You know, we just discussed the transfer, so we won't go into it too much. You can check it out over yeah. on the channel. But, you know, we've seen AC Milan were linked yesterday, and I think everyone were like, oh, God, we've lost him. But now it seems to be us in Chef United, and Chef United don't seem confident they'll get him. They think we'll nick him. We don't seem confident we'll get him. We think Chef United will nick him. There's always the chance of a bigger club to come in. You know, he played 
league and last year, so all the French clubs will know him. You know, we French won't clubs have no team. money though. Lucky, lucky for yeah. us, French clubs have no money right now. So it could be in the situation that it is between us and Sheffield United. He, he is leaving Mount. I think even the manager at Mount Moore said, you know, be off. He's got a yeah. year and a half left on his contract because they all end in December. Yeah. We need help. Yeah, I would take him. I take him in two other bodies. We need at least, center halves. We need at least one body, if not two. And yeah, man, the back line. That's that's where the this is a roster building up show. The the back line is the one that gives me yeah. the, the the hair on the back of my neck stands up when I think about how many bodies we should probably have on that back line. Some reinforcements. I mean, that's it. And you know, he's got he's got history. Obviously, played in England, so he knows England well. I, he played with Brereton as well. Yeah. Uh, at Forest, so he knows him. You know, they seem to be quite pallid. I had a few social media stuff between them before. Uh, you know, look, and he's got a good career, and he's only 23, and you can see why teams are sniffing around him. Bigger teams than themselves, you know, international pedigree, 20 caps, 21 caps in the last two years for obviously split between two nations, but still we've got that i think that's really good two swedish trophies obviously with uh thomason so there's your link but yeah that's another story to double a signing we've done it on another video <laughs> yeah. check that one if you haven't we'll move straight on to the left backs but i think we're all in agreement that probably two center backs is you know the ideal yeah two left backs now this is another one that's quite stocked up in terms of the young lads and you know, Lenny Ray Serino is coming back from a long injury. He's really highly rated at the club. He's involved with the squad. I think he'll have gone out to uh, to Portugal. We'll kind of find out the Portugal squad uh, from when this video is out. The 23 player at Darwin on Tuesday night. So that lineup at Darwin will kind of explain who's gone out and who's mm. obviously not. Yeah. So Serino, Jet Batty, really highly rated England international. And Georgie Gent, who's also highly rated, signed a pro contract, can play any side, any way up that left. So that's kind of stopped well, that position. And Harry Pickering, Mowbray, made that signing for the future. He said it himself, for even when he's not at the club, that signing should benefit us going forward. And then there's the case of Tyo Ed, and that people aren't the biggest fan of him. I don't think he had a great first year. But under a new manager... We see it at other clubs, new managers, players that haven't been any good somewhere suddenly become a key player on that side. So he easily could be in the centre mid or he could be a backup left back. Mm -hmm. Should Rovers go out and get a left back, Jared? Yes. <laughs> we should get everything. I want the <laughs> whole back line covered. Bing, 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 bing. Um, probably, although. Uh, again, Pickering reminds me of JRC in that I just he does. I don't think he has the pace and the stamina and the explosiveness to play as a modern winger in that up and down, you know. And you see the evolution of the game and the evolution of playmaking, the evolution of the the fullback position into the wingback position. And Pickering is does is technically so good on the ball, and I still like his potential out there. Maybe Yondale will like what he sees out of Pickering's left foot out there. Pickering kind of likes to cut in. You know, he likes to make those kind of underlapping runs, which Yondale does. He like so um, but if him or Aiden supplied some depth in midfield, I'd love to see Aiden have a kind of resurgence, you know. We could just chuck them in the bin of players we got for money that we, after year one, we were like, what a waste of money. And then by year three, we're like, look how smart we are. <laughs> right. So maybe Aiden, I would love to see him fall into that category. He has some fire in his belly. I like that out of a player, but you're right. Last season, even I'm sure he would admit was a disappointment. So yeah, I wouldn't mind reinforcements back there again. And then you can have those two players as, depth and also players that could slide in to the midfield maybe to cover for buckley and cup games we were talking about buckle played double the minutes and um i think to, we need to keep him fresh all year and i think not playing him in cup games is a great move andy watson talked about that specifically you know so maybe those guys could spell him and that type of stuff and we have another left back come in so yes left back two please ding, ding. 
Sam, left back for Elvis? I actually am going to disagree. I honestly think I, <laughs> it's about time, about time we actually disagree on something. Yeah. Uh, I actually really like Pickering. I think he's a really, really solid left back, personally. Yeah. Um, I thought, obviously, he was came from Crew. Uh, it was Crew, wasn't it? And the, um, yeah. obviously, went back on low. But honestly, I thought he, he settled in instantly. Um, probably didn't have massive shoes to fill granted because it was only Maui Bell before but obviously he's been successful really after but um, I really like Pickering and Edun is someone who again I'm convinced will have that resurgence I honestly think he will under a decent well Maui Bell is a good manager but under a manager who focuses on youth and sort of that side of stuff and sort of materialising players into someone who they are in five yeah. years' time, I think Edwin could be that player, like you say, who has that resurgence, a bit like a Ben Broughton, who yeah. we were looking at it going, oh, God, it's a lot of money for someone who's not done anything, really. Um, yeah. There's only one really fond memory of Edwin, and it's getting sent off at Peterborough, which yeah. was probably sort of lost as that game. But yeah, I think, honestly, I, I, I think Edwin is someone who left back or centre mid will have that resurgence I honestly have that faith in him purely because he's he's a young lad and he's shown he's shown signs like you said the fire in the belly yeah yeah he, like, tra- like like Travis Travis has that fire in his belly has yeah. that passion Travis probably wasn't the no, when he first came in I remember going to a, a game against Lincoln in the cup yeah and Travis yeah. played centre mid it was one of his first sort of like big games sort of I think Wharton played a centre half as well and um Mowbray was at him all game, having a go at him. Yeah. But it, when when Travis first came in, he wasn't technically that great. He was no. just, he had that passion. He had that fire, like say fire in the belly. But he's he's he had to learn to control better. it, right? He had and to learn to play then, under control and play yeah. within himself. And that's where, to your point, man, like Aiden Pickering, Ryan Giles. Can we really sit here and say those guys had some of their best football last year under Mowbray? No. Hell no. Not even no. Hell no. Mm. <laughs> and I think that it's like a regression to the mean. I think all three of them could have – well, Giles is – let's not talk about that he's all in the squirrel right now. But the other two, I think there will be a regression to the mean. I think they'll have better seasons – under anybody but Mowbray for whatever reason. He could not figure out that left side last year. I think we, you know, you mentioned Travis, completely agree with that. Portsmouth away comes to mind with that challenge. Yeah. You know, when he got sent off and Mowbray kind of didn't feature him again. I don't think he played yeah. in that season after that. So, you know, like you say, you've got to have that balance. And I think that's what Adam was at Peterborough. When you're on a yellow, you've just got to, even if it's a yellow, you shouldn't imagine you've got to calm yourself down and not make a silly challenge. That's the thing with the young team, though. You yeah. you, you, love, you just, love the youth and the potential, but you have to live with that type of stuff with the young team, unfortunately. you know That's definitely right. And that's what we'll find. You know, We'll move on to the centre midland. I think that's going to be Jake Garrett's story, personally. Really fiery centre mid, and he's... He's probably the one young player that I could see being a definite involvement in this first team next year. Okay. Really, really talented left foot midfielder, but he's a bit like Travis. He'll get sent off, and I think he'll have his games where he, you know, he's lost his head a bit. And Thomason has to say, right, come on, Jake, you've had your 45 minutes, you're going to get sent off. Let's just take him off the pitch. So he could easily be one. Again, it's an area where. Well stocked up in, in terms of youth, but first thing we're not. I've put Buckley in there for anyone wondering. I've put him in because although we're in attacking mid on our squad depth diagram, if we expect Thomason to play 4 2 3 1, Buckley's probably going to be one of the two midfielders. Play a 4 3 3 will probably be one of the two midfielders. 5 2 1 2 will still be the same. So, yeah, I have featured him later on in the attacking mids bit, but. In the centre mid, he's probably going to play there. So, yep. I'm not even going to ask you for others near the centre mid. We clearly do because we've lost 
Yeah, it's like Johnson. rhetorical. It's rhetorical. Yeah, Johnson, Davenport. We'll have lost someone else. We were off well even at a play yeah. in that too at times. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many centimeters do we need, Sam? Rather than doing any, because we obviously do. Yeah, yeah, we definitely need a couple. I think we definitely a hundred percent at least two. Um, I think it's funny because when Mowbray was here, he was all he was signing was centimeters after centimeters yeah. after centimeters, and now he's gone, and we're like. <laughs> we need to tell him he's complaining about it before and now 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 we've absolutely in dire need of a centre mid. It is it, yeah. I think it is the centre of the pitch really that the spine It yeah. is the spine of the pitch that we're struggling with. Um mm -hmm. Buckley and Travis, two of the best players last year, without a doubt. I think Travis is probably personally, I think, last year. Obviously Bar Diaz, he has got a weird season where he just suddenly came out and scored twenty goals, but I think Travis was the other one who I thought was outstanding. Mm. Uh, obviously, Kaminsky as well, but that's yeah. without, without saying, really. Um, will Travis be the captain next year? Is another conversation that is. Probably... We have a video on that too. We do have yeah, a video on guys. that. It's, it's, it's another video that we've, that's has, has been done. Um, but I think in two centimeters, um, there's been players linked, uh, but I know we go on to that. But yeah, I, who again? Who's out there? Because mm -hmm. um, obviously both at the moment are academy products. Yeah. So is is there anyone that answers it? I guess uh, Rothwell was a big loss, although probably didn't perform that great after uh, January. Probably his head was sort of elsewhere, and he's made he's made that pretty clear in his uh, Bournemouth yeah, video. Yeah, um, he's not probably somewhere. not. Yeah. Say he's probably not leaving with a best of uh respects to blackburn but does he owe us anything we're not um but yeah i think a couple of midfielders again who again it's just it's a minefield out there it's hard it's hard to find the right one um, mm -hmm. but i'm sure we'll definitely get one who will suit the player and probably another one just as backup yeah um i think a bit of experience is what we need we need mm -hmm. we need an experienced body in there because mm -hmm. They're all young at the moment, and I think we need at least one sort of experienced player, yeah. like a Johnson. Uh, yeah. Which again, I, I would have kept Johnson personally, but I think he's probably going to go play closer to home. So but I think we sent to mid. It's one. Of, I think we personally think we'll bring in an experienced one permanently, and then it'll be a young lad from a prem team that mm -hmm. kind of comes in and a bit oh. like Leighton Clarkson did, but mm. hopefully a bit more successful. Yeah, because you can't go out and buy a Joe Rothwell in this market. You can't go out and buy a player like John Buckley with the money we have because he'd be too much money. Travis, you're not going to find a Travis player unless you, unless we pluck. I think the foreign market's the one we're going to look into a bit, and maybe that's where you get it. A big bearded centre midfielder mm -hmm. that just marshals everything. I think that's the way we're going to go, Jared. Any suggestions for centre mids, or is it just wait and see? That's definitely please send help immediately. Yes, that's that's what it would. I I really like Garrett too. It's just again, I don't know about for this year. Maybe in some cup games early in the season, see see what he's about. You know, see how that sets momentum for him for the year or something like that. But Aloni would make a lot of sense. One thing under Yon Dale, his midfield three was really consistent. He only he almost always kept his six and his 10 and sometimes he would swap his eight out a little bit, but he kept, he always kept a three man midfield and he always kept it consistent. So when we talk about chopping and changing the back line in that horror year was like 2015 or whatever, 2016, whatever it was, I think Yondale does not want that, you know? So that's why I think definitely a starting center midfielder, I bet could be on his radar. But again, you've got guys you could slide in under see what they could do. Aiden, Pickering. I think Andy Watson said he thinks Pickering could like be pretty good in the midfield too. And JRC, what if he wants to give one of those guys a chance? So I think if if we see him sign a left or right winger first immediately or a wing back, then then I'm thinking to myself, maybe one of those guys slide into midfield. You know, but so so yeah, I guess. We need we need both positions, and uh, I think a starter in midfield for sure 
would make me feel a lot better about the year unless he feels like Buckle can do it in that kind of more of a sitting back instead of attacking, you know, with more defensive responsibility. Um, so we'll see. But, yeah, help, please. <laughs> so we'll move on to the wingers. So yeah. I think if we just look back on, you know, last year's we've lost, obviously Kadri Paveda, I know Chapman weren't a big player of the squad, but he's gone. Sam Durant, who I put in Camu, won the talents. I think Luke Brennan, we discussed him before. I think that loan at foul kind of killed his chances of being in because he just didn't play. He come back to he barely played for twenty three. He's actually when he come back, he was kind of in and out. He won't be in half at squads even though he was with us. And it wouldn't surprise me if he'd had a chat with someone and just said, you know, and he were just told you've not really. You're quite down the pecking order. We were quite good with wingers last year, weren't we? We were. Yeah. Even Gallagher playing up wing, Diaz playing up wing at times. Dolan. So, in terms of the current left and right wingers, so we've got three. So, we've got Mark and Day, Dolan, Hedges, who I think are three good options, really good options. Hedges kind of, the season ended at a bad time for Hedges in terms of he just started playing his best football with four games to go. I think he was probably the best player of them last four. Dolan, we all know what he does. Link with other clubs. I don't see him moving at all this summer. I think he's a Rovers player for a few years now. And Mark and Day is basically a new signing. Yeah. We've not really seen him. And then under the 18s and 23s, Walker's just signed. He's gone off to uh, Portugal with the first team. So that's his chance to impress. So yeah. is Harry Leonard. So do we need wingers? And obviously we've been linked with two. So we'll start off, do we need wingers, Sam? Do we need to bring players in and then we'll have a look at the two that have been linked, including the one that Jared's clearly smiling about now? I think you've hit the nail on the head, really. I think what we've got is a great sort of like, with them three first team wingers, I'm going to be biased, bar like Mark Hande, who we didn't really see, but Hedges, like say, towards the end of the year, was one of, looked fantastic. Dolan can play anywhere in front three. Just that energy up top, energy out wide. He's, he's silky on the ball. I think it's a great sort of, well, two anyway. We didn't really get to see Mark Handley, but I've been seeing Spurs fans are adamant. If you can keep him fit, he's going to be, yeah. he's going to take the lead by storm. I've seen off some videos when he was in the under 23s. He looks fantastic. Uh, so I'm really, really excited to see Mark Handley, hoping he can get a, a good, good string of games together. And I get, I really liked Hedges. I think he's a really, really nice sort of addition to the side. Again, one for the future. Hopefully, he's not he's not massively old. He's got time to adapt to the Premier League. Like, uh, Premier League. I was getting ahead of myself there. Uh, English football. <laughs> getting ahead of myself for next year. My bad. <laughs> but I think he's got time to adapt to Premier uh, I've done it again. English football. Um, but Mark, Mark Hande, I think, is someone I'm excited and like say he's a new sign in anyway. So maybe a one or one probably just for numbers. Yeah. One one for each side. Um and then them you there's a couple like say there's a couple of young lads who have obviously gone away. Um I think we've taken twenty twenty three away, haven't we, I think, or twenty eight, something like that. Twenty eight, I think. Yeah. Twenty eight, yeah. And so kind of obviously this and I would honestly I don't kind of named fourteen. Yeah. And then the other 14 are obvious almost. Mm. Like the other 14 are solid. So, jumping, you look like Leonard's gone with them. Uh, Walker, Garrett, Vale, Barnes. You know, we've kind of got the. We've been told who's going. It's just to impress now, isn't it? And, you yeah. know, make that difference. Yeah. To be honest, I, I didn't even realise we had 28 players, I'll be honest. <laughs> it, 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 I was a bit took, took me by surprise. I can't lie, but obviously. Like I say, with the young lads going, it's, it makes sense, but... Yeah. Yeah, it really does. And, you know, we'll go on to the targets that we've, you know, been linked with. I can see Jared smiling again, so we'll go for... I'm also always smiling, to be fair. <laughs> so, Todd Campwell's been a link, you know, anywhere across that front three. Yeah. Three promotions. Again, he's one that we've covered before, and, you know, you can check out the video. It's over on the channel. We covered these, he was kind of the focus of the video. So, Campwell, you know, clearly good enough at championship. You don't get three promotions otherwise. 
the last three years he's been in, he's gone up, obviously. The 1920 season, he ran the Prem, I believe. So he obviously couldn't... Uh, he couldn't go and obviously win the championship because he's playing in the Prem. Yeah. So we've got him and then we've got a certain someone. Uh, look at those appearances. 429. And this is what we mentioned before. Look, you can play right back. Yep. You can play anywhere across that front three. Obviously, the right is ideal. An incredible career playing anywhere and everywhere. You know, Wales, Norway, Italy. Yeah. yeah. Sweden, America. Yeah. So he's played an English game. Obviously, not very much. 20 appearances for Norway. And just look at that for a trophy hall. Yeah. Bonus I mean, trivia. Two different ones. Just yeah. To fit him on. Bonus trivia fact about Joe Ingeberger. He takes an actual Danish Viking longship everywhere he goes on a transfer when he transfers <laughs> to a new. <laughs> we could, we've, uh, we've covered him as well on the video. You can go and check that out. You know, there's plenty of videos on there about these plays, and they will be throughout the year. Yeah, with Jared. You know, with Jared, uh, great graphics he's been doing. Uh, the doodles of an old man, you mean? The doodles of a middle-aged man. I think they're really good. I think it's good. <laughs> Thank uh, you. You know, look at where they are rather than just discussing them. It's yeah, visual, isn't it? So yeah, it's fair. Do we need wingers, Jared? Obviously, I think with Joe Winger, it'd be. He's kind of a utility man as well, isn't he? He's yeah, a he would, he would be utility. Yeah, he would be a guy who understands what Yon Dale wants to do tactically. He's a guy who understands his system. He's a guy who could play center forward, right wing, right back. He can kind of play anywhere. He's played a lot of different positions. And look, that that graphic was amazing, and it showed a lot. And some of those clubs will tell you, like Celtic and Cardiff, that they weren't impressed with his spells there, and some of them were – like according to them, like what some of the worst because maybe he never played or whatever. But like all I know is what I see when I watch him play, which is a guy who gives you a dimension with his especially passing and vision that we blatantly barely have on the roster. Right. It's it's a type of passing style and dimension that maybe two players on the roster have. So that's why I think it's great. It checks the boxes of a veteran. It checks the boxes of a guy with experience. It checks the boxes of a guy who can help on the pitch while the game's going on when Yondale's trying to shout and every manager tells you it's a lot easier to make adjustments at halftime than it is during the middle of the match, right? And so he helps in so many ways. So yeah, him and Cantwell, I'd feel really good if those just those two were brought in. Because I think wingers are kind of some of our strong positions too. I wouldn't be surprised if you see um, Diaz playing more like on the left channel, like in a hybrid winger role. Because um, we'll talk about strikers in a minute. I'll tell you why. So with that even as a possible factor, if those two came in, I would I would say that'd be our bar none our strongest position with what else we have up there on the wing. So just Sam, to your point, uh, Hedges and Marcande, I'm excited about these players too. Really am excited about them to find consistent football and, and hit their potential, no doubt. I think when you mentioned uh, Joe Inger as well, you know, you look at Elliot Bennett, no disrespect to Elliot Bennett, he was not the best player in this team. Yeah. And he'll admit that himself. But he could always give you an option somewhere, and that's what you need. You don't have to be the best player. He can, As long as he's good enough in a few positions, he doesn't have to be Bradley Dack, he doesn't have to be Dolan. Yeah. He can just be a solid option that, Oh, we don't have a right back play right back. Oh, we don't have a winger play winger. And I think they're big in teams, yeah. you know, players who can move about. We need someone who's experienced. I think he'd be good. And like you say, if Camwell and him come in, I think we'd be laughing in the winger department. So two positions to go. Attacking midfielders, obviously, I put Buckley in again. Yeah. Probably backed on his first pre season since 2019. And then Adam Wharton, who. Uh, Really highly rated. Brother of Scott, obviously. Yeah. Gone out to Portugal today as we're recording. Obviously, we're recording on Sunday. This will mm -hmm. go out on the Monday, but he's gone out to Portugal today. Really highly highly rated. I think Mike Sharon called him one of the best players, if not the best he's ever worked with at youth level. He's a real he's a left footed, kind of small, slender player, but 
he can just knock the ball around. So yeah. got that age on his side as well. It wouldn't surprise me if he went down the same route as his brother and went on loan. Yeah. Do we need an attacking fielder? Because obviously we've lost Rothwell. Yeah. We've got that. We've got Buckley. I assume you could put a Dolan in Cam and Hedges. Hedges is probably a good option for Cam. Do we need a, an attacking midfielder, Jared? No. I think no. This, this is a good position for us, actually. I think with Buckley's ability to play there, Dak's ability to play there. And and you've seen, we've, we, we've referenced these videos, these training videos a few times, uh, which I love, these training videos. Whoever's Rover's Twitter person. Yeah, they've done well. It's all the time. Rover's PR Twitter person, if you, by some miracle, it's like I'm praying to you, by some miracle, if you should see this moment in this video, do these every week. Everybody loves them. Never stop making them. I promise you, you it, your job will be secure. Uh, so <laughs> you see Dak out there, and he's making everybody smile. He always has a smile on his face, and that's the world in which I was born. We were born from the same tree or whatever, right? The same kind of species in regards to that mentality. And for him to have his first proper preseason is actually, I think, a very special thing. Maybe we're not talking about as much. It's just so great to see him out there doing, yeah. doing, getting to do something that he was deprived of for the last two seasons, right? So I think we're good. I think we're good at Cam. I think we'll be okay there. I'm not worried about it really at all. I think that will have solid ear. I don't think, you know, I think he'll give us good minutes, and I think it's good to have somebody that can spell Buckley or we'll figure that out. But more minutes for Dak, a little bit less minutes for Buckley, and then you have homeostasis, I think. Uh, Sam, attacking midfielder, just a quick one. Do we need one? I think if you get a centre mid in or a couple of centre mids, like we mentioned, we probably do need, then Buckley can definitely fill that centre attacking mid role as well. Yeah. Um, but again, I think it's you either get one or the other. If you get Camp yeah. in, then you're, all, you're drops, probably all right. Send him mid, you know what I mean. So probably want to camp well, get him in. Yeah, that would be that him. would yeah. be an, an unbelievable coup if we could get him in. Uh, but I'd, I'd, I would find it a little bit weird because obviously Norwich have come down, so yeah. I'd, I'd, I wouldn't really understand it. However, uh, we no one no one really understands what goes on behind closed doors of football. So <laughs> I think if if you get a centre mid in probably all right for the cam if you get cam and you're probably all right for the sentiment so it's yeah. one or the other i think i don't think but if you get a couple of sentiments and cam is absolutely perfect i don't, don't think that's one of the that's on his day especially you know, a couple of years back he was one of the best players in the league but like, there's no there's no denying that at all and i think you can get him back two freak injuries it's not like it's a muscle injury or something that cat keeps no, i know it's it's, impact, it's, right, it's, two, it's two freak injuries and there's a, there's a handful of players that have done that. Obviously, you've got like R9 and Baggio have done it, d did it twice, but there's no not many players really that have done both ACLs. So, yeah, I think it's a freak injury. And it's not, like I say, it's not something that is likely to happen again. And if it is, then probably will be game over. But, um, no, I think if we can get that going, yeah, 100% will be absolutely sterling. Yeah, he's the engine. And his technique and vision are so good. Mm -hmm. That's why I think he'll be okay with two, you know, less than stellar ACLs. Because, again, he's lost some explosiveness, some quick twitch acceleration, the ability to separate in tight space. He's lost some of that. It's okay. It's just science, folks. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm slagging him off by saying that. But he is unique in that because of his vision and his technique – and his flair, he can make up for it just by angling his foot and the ball's dropping like a gem, you know? So so that's why I'm also not worried about him coming off these two either. I think he'll still be great for us. He's not gonna be, he's not gonna look like League One Dak, but but he's gonna have some passes this year that'll just like melt your melt your brain out of your skull like ice cream on hot day. You saw it when he came back from injury, though, didn't you? That, that assist at Derby was the one against Derby was the one for me. Yeah, that yeah. was just something else. I, I, not anyone in that team could have done that. Yeah, but he, he did genuinely when he came back. He looked like our best player again, and he, I think yeah. there's there's no hiding from that. I think he he will be mm -hmm. great next year, and hopefully that player who can score 16, 17 goals like he was before his injury. 
because yeah. he did do in the first two seasons of the championship i believe he got what 16 17 i think so yeah he's gonna we're gonna have to again his minutes and how much he plays mm. right you don't want him in buckley wearing down and then we're in some nightmare scenario where we're sur- trying to survive and our two most creative players are basically worn out you know like ugh. I'm just like, mm-hmm. I'm freaking out thinking of that scenario. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, Dak has to work his way back. So I don't, I don't think he should give us 20,000 minutes this year, but I think he should he'll give us 12, you know, or, or I mean, I'm sorry, not 20. You know what I mean though? Like mm-hmm. I think yeah. he, he could give us good minutes, but I don't expect him to start and play 30 games and give us 30, 90 minute games this year. You know, I just don't know if that'd be the best idea with him. So, We've done every position but the final one. Forwards, the one that you're probably going to change the most, if any, you know, over the next few weeks in terms of what we've got. So, obviously, Brereton Diaz, mm. link with every club going. I'm sick of every link that's coming out. <laughs> French, Italian, some Italian club were linked with him that had never spent 20 million on him. I can't remember the name, but yeah. Uh, Sam Gallagher. Obviously played on wing last year. We saw that video when he met the squad and Thomas and called him his striker. Yeah, but to you see a fellow striker, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You've got Butterworth obviously struggled last year at Rovers, went out on Fleetwood and didn't really play. But he's got his year, he's got his chance to impress Thomas and he'll obviously be out with the squad. Jack Vale, mm-hmm. you know, uh, impressed on the last day on fire for the 23s i think this could be easier to you know maybe get in i think if diaz goes yeah we're going to sign another striker but i don't think we'll sign two and that would leave us we probably veil as a third choice option a fourth if we're yeah. going to be involved obviously you can make five subs next year that's yep. something we've not thought of so maybe before they wouldn't have got in but now we can maybe play you know, rather than just sitting on the bench. And Sam Burns, who went on loan to scum for it, I think, personally think he did all right in a really, really, really bad scum for it team that had Liam Feeney putting the ball in the box. Yeah. So obviously it's not the uh, the best of service. You know, I think this is a kind of two questions. It's, do we need a forward now? And if Diaz goes, we're probably going to need another, aren't we? But do you see him going? So if we look at, we'll start with DC Diaz going. Uh, Jared, we'll start with you. Yes, <laughs> that's a. Do you hear? I murmured it. Yes, because I don't want him to go. But it's the cold reality of modern act football economics, yeah. where now the big six just have to sell to each other because nobody has any money now. So five years from now, they'll just be trading players back and forth because nobody else can afford their wages. Um, so yeah, yeah. If Diaz goes, that money can go back into the club, which I think would be good. Can we really tie up more of a more percentage of our budget into wages? Cause we did, don't forget one of Mowbray's last pen to paper deals was extending Sam Gallagher, right? That was yeah. one of the last contract deals he extended. So Sam is here and Sam is now has more wages than he did before. And I don't know if that's been released, but I bet my bottom dollar he's top four on the club for wages. If not, number two. If not, number two. So uh, he's definitely up there. So do you want to do that and invest that much money in it when you're probably going to play a single striker system? Um, I don't I'm not so sure. And I'll tell you this. If anybody here was anybody watching was did not enjoy Sam out on the wings last year. Don't worry. I guarantee you Yondale's not going to do that. That's a Tony Mowbray being cute thing. Yondale wants a center forward that can occupy two defenders and move into the right space and pull players out and let the people behind him react to what he's doing. He likes a center forward. And the first two moves, the first two things he did at Malmo when he took over was got a center forward on loan, not some young startlet, startlet from a young or prem club or something. He went out and got a guy that was a veteran that could come in and give him exactly what he wanted out of that position. And then when that loan ended, he went out and got another veteran on a loan to give him what that last veteran gave him or similar. Right. So that was such a key thing he's honed in on quickly with roster building at Malmo. So 
when he did the good to see a striker and did the like awesome <laughs> predator handshake like with Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Um so, you know, I was like, oh, I wonder if he's going to fall in love with Sam and just be like, nope, you're my guy. And I think that's where we're, we're at a kind of an advantage, actually, is that Sam, yeah. I think, fits the mold of what he wants out of that position. And I bet you his he'll work on movement with Sam a lot, um, I think, early on. So I think we're kind of weirdly OK. The DS thing is weird, but I don't mind what we have. I like Vale and Burns, too. And. Don't forget, Yoinga Burger could play up there. He's played everywhere. <laughs> Your favorite man, I believe. <laughs> Sam, the stunt striker situation. So, you know, we'll just go quickly on it. Do we need a striker? I think on the on the sort of Brighton topic, I think it's not a matter of will he go. I think it's a matter of should we sell him because he's out of contract next year. Yeah. So do we do we cash in now? I think <clears throat> if he's not signing the contract, which I don't think he will unless we, we, we do really well this year and then we go to the Premier League with him. Um, I think a lot on the Gallagher stuff, I think we will see a different side of Gallagher next year. He showed, he showed signs of it, that goal at Middlesbrough, at home against Middlesbrough, that was just, that was different class. And I think, I like, again, I like Gallagher. I think he was played in a wrong position um, and it was, a, it was sort of a, it was a system that wasn't working. I thought Mowbray was very stubborn in terms of that. So I think the strikers, I think we could see Butterworth sort of drop out a little bit and they all, because mm -hmm. Butterworth's had his chances. Um, he's been around the first, again, he's in one of them. He feel, I feel like he's been around for ages. I feel like he's always been there. Yeah. But he just hasn't really taken his chance. I don't even think, he's not scored for is he? And yeah. He hasn't. And I think, I think Vale will come in. I think he he will be that new because Butterworth was that new striker we had a yeah. few years ago. He was that young yeah. lad that he's oh he's gonna be the next yeah. big thing or he's gonna be our striker. He, he's not, and I think Vale will probably be our third choice, second yeah. choice. But again, I think we will sign someone if Brereton leaves. I think we have to mm -hmm. uh, mainly for numbers because like I think Gallagher will be our first choice striker this year, and I do. Mm -hmm. I think if, if if it was this time last year, I probably would have put twenty quid on him scoring twenty goals because yeah. obviously everyone did that for Burton. So yeah, um, but they're not offering it this year. I've seen on a yeah, I've seen uh, someone someone asked for it and they said they're not offering it. I this don't year. blame them. I don't yeah, blame no, them. I don't it. blame them. A lot whoever of people put on, Whoever put that bet uh, on the market must have been given a few words. I think I saw oh, yeah. somewhere that Bucky's paid out. About a million quid on yeah. Brereton Mets last year in terms of I, you know season one. I think we bought a lot. Oh, sorry, I just whoever put that on the market is now handling chicken fighting in Mexico. As a <laughs> I promise you, that's where their new job is. I think I think we bought a lot. It's his issues been his appearances have come so wide apart because of injuries. And, He's had a lot of back issues. I think did he make his debut? I think it was Bolton at home when we played basically Bolton under twenty threes when they were going bust and then yeah. he come back he's kinda of played at the end of every season and last year was the first season he's properly played and I think he's just suffered from injuries that bad that yeah. he he seems tired after ten minutes and that's his issue and strike is one of them positions as a young lad if you don't score goals or as any strike if you don't score goals you're gonna get called out for it. Brereton has been for the last three years. You know Gally's had a bit of stick about it. Yeah, it's a tough one, and it's probably the hardest position to bring a young lad in. Mm -hmm. Over than probably keeper, mm -hmm. obviously for a centre back. But mm -hmm. you know, we've gone through all the squad. We've looked at what we need. I think we're all in agreement. We need a lot, and we probably need it soon. And that's without losing anyone. So you eight, know, we'll keep across. So eight names. What do you think, Dan? Final Thank number. You. Over I under eight. Seven minimum. Yeah, seven minimum. Same. I yeah, think that's where we're at. Yeah, I'll go with eight. So I think one video we haven't mentioned, although we have mentioned a few, Jared obviously took a look at Thomason's tactics. You know, you can check that out as well. Yeah. Plenty of content going out. I think them videos are just the one and two of many videos we're putting out. I think they've been really good. They've been really well received, so thank you everyone for that. There'll be a lot more coming. We've got 
a month and a bit until the season actually starts. Plenty coming out across the championship season. I think them weeks will fly by. A few transfers, a few matches. I think it will be fly through. And before we know it, we'll be previewing the QPR game. Yeah. You'll be back with your watch alongs, Jared. That's right. We'll be really enjoying it. And, you know, fingers crossed for a good season. Thank you both of you for joining us. Thanks to everyone for watching. We'll be back very soon with a new video. I can guarantee you that. Make sure you hit subscribe. Click every button down there. Subscribe. Even a fancy graphic for it. Hit subscribe. Hit the bell. You know, you'll be notified when everything's uploaded. As you can see, there's plenty on there. Even check out the Buckley podcast if you've got time. Thanks again. And we'll sign off and we'll see you again. Yeah.